Well, spring is here, and the rains have come, and storms have started popping up, and it uh, looks like we're going to have a new roof on the house. And uh, in so doing, we've discovered we sprung a number of holes. And investigating solutions to the rain staying outside, uh, we're looking at putting a, maybe a metal roof on the building. And in the process of that, that kind of messes up something else, which has been all of our antennas that we use are inside the attic. And therefore, they don't go through radio waves, don't go through um, solid metal very well. So that uh, leads us to fixing a few things. Now, the reason they're in the attic instead of outside is, for those of you who may be new to this particular channel, I live in a hollow. Now, if you know what a hollow is, that's fine. If you don't, it's, it's geographic depression between hills and ridges and I'll put up a little something right here and I'll spin this for you and as I spin around you'll see I'm surrounded on all sides by hills and uh, once uh, radios try to get over that they'll bend and bounce and some signal will get around but by and large radios don't go through solid limestone either so that makes it a little more difficult so one of the solutions is to get radio or TV and unless you have satellite, which is normally pointed up out of the hole, is you have to bring your antennas up. And the easiest way to do that is going in the attic. And I've done that. I have some non-wind stable kind of homemade jobs. Here's the one I'm using right now. I'll put it up. And as you can see, it's made out of, you know, just stuff we had around the house. Some excess coax and some uh, plumbing uh, pipe and things of that nature and it's just a clothes hanger I got some wire ends on there just keep maybe somebody from poking their eye out which somebody would probably be me since I'm the only one up in the attic but it worked out pretty well and it brought in enough signal we can certainly get a ball game we listen to the radio that sort of jazz but I can't take that thing outside if we put a new roof on and the roof happens to be metal rather than asphalt shingles because it'll never withstand the UV of the sunlight. It'll never withstand 110 mile an hour, 150 mile an hour winds. We get rolling through this hollow. And my area of tendency is in 90 mile an hour winds according to the code map, wind map in the codes. But we actually get a little higher wind upon occasion because of these, again, these hills. As it comes over the hills, it tends to roll and often pick up a, a higher velocity just because it creates that little negative, little little uh, suction effect as it comes over those little hills. So um, anyway, um, with mostly junk parts, some purchase parts, I built a better antenna. One I think that I can, when I, if I have to rent the cherry picker myself to go up and put this thing up on the roof, uh, I hope it will stay up there. It's designed and built to stay up there and still bring in enough radio signal that it's gonna be worth uh, the effort. There are some commercial ones available, and uh, I'll discuss that just shortly. Now, most um, commercial FM radio band antennas that you can buy that, are, that claim to be uh, separate by themselves, omnidirectional, which means they receive their signal 360 degrees are, are really not truly omnidirectional. What they are is a folded dipole and then a second folded dipole like this and they come down and they're they're hung out of a side little plastic brace that comes out on the side and they hang off the pole something like that and what that does for you other than kind of be stuck outside. It gives a nice little place for our little winged friends to want to come land on. And then they, of course, what do they do? They, they like to poop on a roof. And uh, with a metal roof, I don't know how well the paint holds up, but that just looks like another lovely place for them to be. And with the height of the roof and the location of this, this is gonna be a nice, lovely perch up there amongst the other antennas. The other issue that we have is that they're not truly omnidirectional. If you have what is called a, a um, Smith chart, 
It's a logarithmic circular chart. It, pro it uh, shows the propagation of the antenna of the, uh, the range. This is actually much more like a, a four-leaf clover because if we, if we had our circle, when we put our dipole on here, we actually have one dipole running this way. We have the other dipole going like this. And we end up having a pattern that blooms out like this on front. One blooms out like that on that side. Then we have one that blooms out like this on this side. Blooms out like this on that side. So you actually have sort of a clover design rather than a full even pattern all the way around. And that's not much of a big deal for a lot of people. However, there is a different type of antenna that works. And this, this is actually for a horizontal polarization. Now, if you have a vertical polarization, what are the ground, ground planes are used for? We have basically a vertical rod. And we have a ground plane that it sits on. And then when it propagates, it's waveform is going to be this nice, lovely 365-degree circle, kind of a big donut around. And they can actually stack donuts on depending on the multiple and the fragments of the wavelengths that they are. But they are round even on, in regards to this chart. So if we draw another Smith chart and we put our antenna in the middle, it's even in 365 degrees, which means, you know, it, it has it's equal opportunity no matter, you don't have to point it anywhere. Now, television antennas, most of the ones that we see, you know, they have a, or the old style, they'll have a, a UHF portion, maybe they have a corner reflector like mine does. And then they have a, a series of VHF driven elements behind. Most of those that are also carry in there, the FM band, because the FM broadcast is in between channel two and channel three of the VHF band, at least it used to be if I remember correctly. The problem is when you look at a, something like this stuck on a pole, it's directional. So if we look at and I will do two different charts depending on the Q or the dB gain. As you pinch the gain, how much more forward you're making it, you end up having something that may be shaped more like this. Compared to shape something like this where this is forward and this is the reverse. And this is a high gain, this is relatively low gain. And what that does for us is it gives us an idea the more we direct it. But if we're pointing, say in my case, I'm pointing towards Nashville. If I have something over here towards a town called Cookville, I'm less likely to pick it up because it's beginning to cheat that away. It's starting to reject that away from me. Or if I have one over here in this other town over here, it's going to tend to reject that because I'm trying to drag everything from the front into the antenna. And that's where an omnidirectional radio antenna is good to have one that is separate from your television antenna because it allows you to pull these signals in. So let's uh, kind of go on to the build of this thing, how I put this thing together. It's not made to be a transmitter, it's just made to be something that's gonna be sturdy enough to go outside, to stand up to the wind, to stand up to the UV, and then I'm not gonna crawl up on top of this, the uh, house, and kind of give you an indication kind of where that is. The reason I have a problem with that is, when we look up kind of at the top of the house, this ridge point right here is about 34, feet above the ground. And it's really not a good smooth way, and I have a, a uh, 10, 12 pitch roof, and uh, getting close to, well, actually just past 50, I don't heal up as good as I used to, and it uh, gets to be quite slick to be crawling up on top of, uh, top of uh, a building anymore. So if I mount this to give my, to uh, 
get the best vertical advantage, something like here. And I put my little antenna here. That's going to give me some pretty good uh, height out of it. But it's also going to be very, very difficult for me to service. Now, I've got this thing put together, but I'm going to take it back apart to uh, seal up uh, a few places to make sure the water stays out of it. I do have some weep holes in the bottom to allow final drainage. But as I do this, I'm going to show you how it went together. Now the FM broadcast band here in the United States is 87 and a half megahertz to 108. So if you add those two numbers together and divide by two, that'll give you a center frequency around 98 megahertz. You divide, uh, put that underneath 468 and that'll give you approximate wavelength of your half wavelength here. You div so that's four eighths of a wavelength. Divide that by four, that give you the one eighth wavelength here. Multiply that number back by five to give you the five eighth wave here. And that works out right at six foot. So uh, I just, this, this particular piece of aluminum, this is a half inch by 035. It's a pressure tube, just stock it in the supply house. It's just clamped off at the top and run down in the bottom. It's a little bit past the point of injection here of the ground plane. But that's close enough for, uh, for what we need it to be. It's more of an issue of mechanically putting this thing together. But that gives us five eighths on top, one eighth on the bottom for the radiator. These are uh, just leftover brass brazing rods that we used around the house. We've got them, we used them when we uh, witched out for the well. We use them for bobs when we did the siding, uh, lining on the gun, the sights on the gun. They're, uh, they're just pretty heavy brazing rods, already in stock, already around the house, worked out fine. So let's uh, ease up a little closer. Again, that formula was for, to find half wavelength of a fairly thin rod or wire, it's 468 over the frequency in megacycles or hertz. And in this case, if you take 98 uh, megacycles, which is about center band, uh, underneath uh, 468, uh, that's, that's four eighths, divided by four, multiply it times five, that's gonna give you in feet pretty close to this six foot piece right here. Now let's take this apart from this end. We have this piece and it's got a couple of drain holes as well as a drain hole in the bottom should we get water up in here. I've got a piece of coax, I've got a little uh, wire tie for strain relief on this side. This disassembles by taking just a, a coupling and this We'll also seal around the base here, this way. Now how this goes together is the uh, shield wire comes through the four volt flange and it goes in at an angle into this little nipple, passes through here. The center of the rod is connected here with two small rivets. These are one eighth aluminum rivets, aluminum to aluminum. And then we have the other side goes through on the opposite side. So we go through, we have a hole here and we have a hole here. That way we keep them kind of balanced, come around here. So the edge of the aluminum tube only comes to right about here. So that way we keep our wires protected from getting nubbed up in here. Now if I was doing a broadcast, one that we were doing, we could do the same thing with one of these on the top side of it. And that way we could have an actual gap. We could have our vertical radiator on the top side and the ground plane actually below in the gap that we would we'd normally typically see above it. So we'd have a gap between it. In this case, this is just for listening to the radio. We're not putting any power on it. So this is not a big deal for me. And the wires then, tuck 
up into the hole. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to seal with my little silicone on this, on the other side here to keep the rain out. And then what I'll do is I will take, when we, when we replace this, because this is not glued, in case I have to get back here to drill these rivets out to disassemble this, I'll put a little bit of silicone around here. We'll push this back up into place and reassemble it. And that way we hopefully will have the top end dry, but if we leak any water through, it should still leak out the bottom. Now I wrapped, I wrapped the base of the antenna upright with a little white electrical tape to contrast it against that gray base. You should be able to see the four grooves for the radiators, for the ground radiators, that were filed out using the uh, chainsaw sharpening file. And to the right is the ground, which is the shield of the, uh, the coax. Now that's actually a small extension wire that was brought up through there and it's surrounded with some heat shrink tubing and, and to keep that, uh, that uh, connector there uh, protected from the sunlight. And it goes down now. The coax I'm using is actually several years old. It dates back to 1986. I had a little bit of that left over. That is an RG59. It is a 90% copper shield. It has no foil and the center conductor is stranded so it makes a really good work cable for this type of thing because you can crimp it you can solder it both pieces uh, center conductor and the shield can be soldered it's hyper flexible you uh, when you see me move in some of the video look how easily it bends uh, but I use it mainly because it makes up in this type of tight environment real easily without breaking the center conductor. Just want to take a moment to show the end of it. Just, I just closed this off with a set of uh, nippers and I just closed that. It's tight enough, it's rain tight. I ran a little bit of silicone on the top of that just for good measure, but it doesn't need it. Now just take a look at the mount a little closer. Again, it's just, just that piece of aluminum cut, lined out, made out of scrap, a couple of holes put in it in order to make it lighter. This little notch up here actually fits in the flange one of the holes on the flange and then the cocks over to catch that so that the actual flange rests in this part and then these two hold it down because there's really not that much space there to hold on to that short little nub. But uh, the entire assembly fully built weighs two, two plus pounds, weighs under three pounds, so it doesn't weigh much. And that's a good sign. The, Profile, round's always a good profile for wind, high winds. Uh, just gonna work just wonderfully.